Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. So I finished this book about uh, five minutes ago. <laughs> and I don't really do individual book reviews anymore, but I just have to because I have feelings. And that's what you guys are for. So, whew, here we go. Let's talk about Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass, House of Earth and Blood. So, hi, my name is Jen. Welcome to the Book Refuge. I freaking love this book. I'm still a little stunned. And here's a couple things. One, I know this took me six months to get to, and it's taken me way longer than it should have to get to it. And I've seen review after review say how good this book is. I hadn't heard much to detract me from reading it. It was always like, you're gonna like this book. If you love Sarah J. Mass, if you love adult fantasy, like you're gonna like this book. And you're right. You are all right, and I'm sorry, and I'm happy to eat crow. I'm a humble woman. I'm okay taking a step back because I had two reasons for waiting this long. Number one, I haven't really been in a fantasy mood. You know this. If you are a regular viewer of my channel, you're probably even like, why are you reviewing Crescent City and you're not talking about romance books? Because for the last year, I have a much more strongly focused on romance on this channel than I have on fantasy. However, fantasy is my first love. Like before I ever read romance, I was reading fantasy. And Sarah J. Mass particularly has been a favorite of mine for the last three years probably. I've been to her uh, book signings twice. Um, I would have gone to more still if COVID wouldn't have happened and kept us from going to them. Um, and so I had every confidence that I would be a fan of this book. So I said the first reason because I haven't been in the mood for romance. Number two, because I know this is the first in a series. And I know that based on like what her schedule of books is, it could be a year or two more before we get another one in this series. And... I don't know, especially now after reading this book, which we'll get into, I'm going to have some non-spoiler stuff, but mostly spoiler because this book's been out for, I'm getting all sleepy all of a sudden. So I'm not going to keep things that non-spoilery because most of you are probably watching this because you want my feelings. I still have tears drying on my face from finishing this book. It was amazing. And yeah, so... I already am part of the group that is always eagerly awaiting more books from Sarah. And it's a painful wait when you read a woman's books who she just gets to the heart of you every time. And so I, okay, I'm going to get into the non-spoilery parts of this. I'm going to talk about how I feel about the book as a whole. I'll go over the basic plot summary, which I feel like does this book a disservice because so much about what makes it awesome I can't tell you in a non-spoilery part, um, but Sarah has leveled the hell up in her writing. This book, I was stunned as things started unraveling and just how much she has grown in her books, you know, and I, I think that adult fantasy is where she was always meant to be because her plot and just like, I think of the pain she was able to cause even in her young adult books, but I feel like she always would like pull the punches. Like she'd make a punch and then it would like, it would hit and it would like slide off the face with people being brought back to life or the full weight of actions not happening. There's still some painful things like Kingdom of Ash got in its blows with me, but I think of, you know, like Akatar pulled its punches all the time right and that's something people complain about and I feel like this book does not do that and it is a brutal world she has created and instead of being with the people who are part of the elite of that world because let's be honest like 
Aelin Galathinius, though she is going up against a lot, she is basically like, she works for it, but she is a super powered woman and she always has a plan and it's always ready to go and like, she's five steps ahead of you like that. And Bryce is someone who's barely hanging on and her and Hunt have everything against them and watching them bond over that, watching them become friends and then watching them become more and watching them learn to trust someone and watching them fight against a system that is just like keeping them as slaves is just wow. Like it's, it's so different from what you see in her other books. And so it's just that like, it's that neck, it's that level up, you know, it's that like new level up, level up, level up. That's how I felt while I was reading this. So um, a lot of the complaints that you'll hear about this book, which again, I haven't heard too many complaints. There is an advanced amount of world building that goes into it. This is true. This is true. However, it never felt boring to me because the way that she put this world building in there, she was showing me fun things. You know, this is a fantasy world. Um, in case you know, the reason it's called House of Earth and Blood is because I think there's four or five different houses. Man, I never even looked at the map the whole time. That's cool. Um, yeah, there's four different houses. There's a House of Earth and Blood, which is shifters, humans, witches, ordinary animals, and um, some chosen. There's the House of Sky and Breath, which has the angels, fae, elementals, um, and then there's a house of many waters, which is the river spirits, the mare, which is the mermaids, um, water beasts, nymphs, kelpie, kelpies, and then house of flame and shadow, which is, you know, the evil things, the demons, rocky, reapers, wraiths, vampires, dragons, necromancers, all those things. So that's why this is called the house of earth and blood, because, um, Actually, that's very interesting because we're equally working with people from like the House of Sky and Breath, which is where Hunt fits into, and the House of Earth and Blood, which is what Bryce fits into. Um, so that's awesome. I don't know what Sarah's plans are. I feel like um, I now need to go back and rewatch some interviews with her I watched about this so that I understand where she's going with the series and what's going on next. I don't know if there'll be a book that is, you know, named after like each place, um, or what, but I am equally interested in all of it. So yes, there's a lot of world building, but I love that because we get to meet Mer Mare. We get to see shifters we get to see the ins and outs of these different things and i loved that i loved that and i feel like it was done in a really interesting way and i feel like it's a story that is like slowly rolling down a hill right so the this is where we get to like there's the basic plot overview of this so the first part of this book um takes place where we have bryce who is 23 she's a party girl she is best friends with danica who is the head of a wolf pack um, and she's really close with them. Like they have adopted her into her family. Um, Danica is like one of the most powerful wolf shifters that's been around in a while. And she does a few like shifty jobs on the side, which we don't know a lot about. And so the big thing that's happening in their life right now is that, um, one of Danica's, um, pack members, I think it's her second in command. He is finally like making his move on Bryce and he's asked her out and she's been hesitant to their chemistry because she's like, if we make a move and it doesn't work out, you're my best friend second. You know, I don't want to mess this up. And he's like, just give me a chance. Like, I'm not putting any pressure onto you. Give me a chance. And so she's finally agreed to give him a chance. Right. But this certain night that we're dealing with at the beginning is pack night, which means Danica, there's one night a week that Danica and her pack, they have a night alone, they do pizza, movie, games, whatever, and they stay together. And Bryce and a couple of their other friends decide they're going to go out to a club. And so there is trigger warnings for like a lot of drug use in this. Granted, it is, you know, they're fictional drugs, but I think that that is still a warning to share with people. And Bryce is a party girl. So her and her friends, they 
do a bunch of drugs that night and it gets really crazy and she is sending these text messages to Danica and at some point she like passes out for a while she ends up getting a ride back to the apartment and she stumbles upstairs stumbles in to a massacre and there isn't any like coherent body pieces left of Danica and the entire pack. There was only one pack member who wasn't there because I think he is on like a sports team and so he's like didn't come like he was with them or whatever. But every pack member is slaughtered. And Bryce comes upon this just as the creature who did it, it's this demon creature is um making its way out of the building so she chases after it um she uh has more skills than we are shown right off the bat because bryce isn't just some like wilting flower she is a half a half human as we are like told pretty early on and so she chases down this creature and she catches up to it as it is attacking an angel which is called like the Malachim, I think they're called. And she saves that angel. She gets bit by this demon and then she passes out. And when she comes to, she is being interrogated, not like cruelly, but she's being interrogated. And one of the people interrogating is this guy named um, Hunt Athelar. He is an enslaved fallen angel who is, you know, He's going to be our love interest in this story um, and he is serving the governor of the city he has a slave contract with him and he is slowly paying off that contract a uh, death for a death so hunt he was a part of this rebellion that happened 200 years ago um, some fallen angels were trying to take down um, the hierarchy that was enslaving their people. Um, there are a lot of people who are enslaved in this series. If you aren't part of the upper echelon, you are treated like garbage. This is just a fact of life. And he fails at his rebellion, and so he has been a slave, which means he has a, a halo tattooed on his head, and he has a slave mark on his wrist, and he can be bought and sold until someone decides his debt is paid off and be freed and currently he is owned by Micah who is the governor of um, this city and he is paying off like I said a death for a death so every person that he killed in that um, rebellion which was like over 2000 he is owing Micah a death for a death so this is important to be set up because it's gonna give hunt his motivation okay so I'm giving a more detailed explanation of this than I've seen people give again because I want to push you into reading it um, and a lot of the explanations I heard for the series I know people are trying to like oh just read it you'll understand but when you're taking on a fantasy book that's 800 pages sometimes you need a little more incentive than just like it's like a magical CSI which I'll get to that's not always enough to convince people, okay? So anyway, so all this is happening. Hunt is one of the people who's observing the, observing her being interrogated, and then she ends up getting sent. She's done, and then we skip ahead two years. So yeah, it's kind of this abrupt, just we skip ahead two years later, and Bryce is, <laughs> in a depression and she is working for this antiquities dealer and one of her clients that she is brokering a deal with ends up getting murdered and it turns out that this guy is a murdered in the same way that Danica and the pack was murdered and so I forgot to mention this but two years ago they blamed this they blame Danica and the Pack's murder on this terrorist group who ha who Danica had been trying to take down. And so they blamed him for it. And he's in prison for her death now. So two years later, someone is killed in the same manner that Danica was killed. And he has ties to Danica. So now we don't believe that this guy, his name is Briggs, actually killed Danica and the Pack. Which makes a little bit of sense 
because nobody believed, you know, nobody who, who mattered believed that Briggs could have done the job. Um, cause number one, he was like, I think already in prison for something else. Maybe. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. That didn't occur to him. Um, but the way that the pack was murdered was so brutal and the pack is so strong that it didn't make sense that they could be taken out like this. Right. So Bryce gets asked by the governor, Micah, who is the same person who owns the slave contract for Hunt, for her to look into what Danica was into and to see if she can go through, you know, Danica's last movements, who Danica's connections were, and see if she can make any progress on this case. And to protect her, he sends Hunt to be her guardian as well as to help her with the investigation. And so Hunt is like, hey, I'm trying to pay off my debt to you. Like, and he still owes him some 2,000 deaths. He's like, if you send me to help Bryce with this, what about my contract? And so Micah makes him a deal. And he says, if you help Bryce find out who this murderer is by this time because there's this big event that's going to be happening called the summit where all the heads of the different magical beings will get together to make laws and stuff like that and he doesn't want there to be an embarrassment of this case happening and he's like if you help her figure this out i will reduce your debt from 2000 to 10 and you will only owe me 10 deaths if you successfully do this so that gives hunt some motivation because when we put these two together, um, he doesn't have a very high opinion of her because he, rem so he remembers her from that two years ago. She doesn't remember anything that happened really that night. So she doesn't remember that Hunt was one of the people there. Um, and is actually the person who like found her in the alley, um, with the angel she saved and like stopped the bleeding in her leg. And they just are instant sparks. So one of the things I really like that Sarah does with this relationship is that he is an alpha and to kind of, I feel like this is directly to make fun of what is said about Sarah's characters, her male characters before, is that uh, Bryce makes fun of him is like, quit being an alpha hole. So anytime he will try to be controlling or suggest things to her, she'll be like, you're not the boss of me, quit being an alpha hole. And so I can tell that's a direct thing of, you know, Sarah's critique in the past. So the last thing that I want to mention, like before I go to complete spoilers, so this is just all the setup um, of like what gets these two together working on this murder case um, is one of the things I'm going to push you towards reading this for is the relationships, okay? This is, well, number one, like, the romance you're going to see happen, obviously between our two <laughs> characters here, is so well-crafted and so natural how it builds. Like, the different situations they get, there's insta-lust between them, of course. He's a beautiful, godlike fallen angel. And she's not too shabby herself. But the way that it builds, it builds from their enemies to friends to more. And it's beautiful. There is also the relationship between Danica and Bryce, which a lot of it is, you know, told through Bryce remembering things with her. But you do see their connection, which Sarah does such a good job of establishing it. Just the ease of their relationship right off the bat, because that's going to be Bryce's entire motivation for this whole book. So if you don't believe how deep this friendship is and that they can say, I love you to each other, like it wouldn't be enough there. Also Bryce's relationship with family members. She has a mother and a stepfather and she has a father who I won't tell you who it is. We won't talk about it in the non-spoiler part. And she also has a half brother and watching the relationship with her brother. I just, I loved it watching the relationship with her friends and seeing the relationship with her parents is it was so good it was i love relationships i love uh platonic relationships in books 
and watching that grow in this is amazing. Um, Bryce also has some, she has a pet who is a little chimera whose name is Shrinks, <laughs> or Shrinks, I can't pronounce his name, and she has a friend named Lahaba who is a water sprite who likes to watch trashy soap operas and um, <laughs> is just adorable, and her relationship with her is so cool to see too, and it just grounds Bryce and gives her things to fight for, and just makes her this like full-bodied amazing character and I love it so wow the non-spoiler part of this was way longer than I thought it'd be and now I'm going to jump into the spoilers where I'm just going to literally gush about individual things because I'm not going to do a step-by-step -step of the entire book if you've already read the book and you want to like you want to see the things that I'm going to freak out about because I'm sure that the things you freaked out about now's the time so thank you if you don't want spoilers for this for some reason if I hope I pushed you over the edge into reading it I loved it It was five out of five stars yes there is a slow crescendo towards when stuff goes down but Sarah pays you back in spades and a half for making you wait for it and again I don't think the wait is unworthy like the story being told and the way that it's built then makes when those dominoes start knocking down so satisfying. I was crying. Like I said, I still have tears drying on my face. I was screaming. I was cheering because watching the payoff of this story is worth the build up to it. So if you haven't read this yet, if you like Sarah J Mass, if you worry there's not enough romance, I'll tell you, it's still pretty hot. There's lots of sexual tension. There's lots of like references and stuff. There isn't any full-blown sex scenes in this book. Um, there are a couple almost. So whether you like don't want sex in your book or whether you feel like there won't be enough, I didn't miss it. I didn't miss it. I thought it made sense and I like that she didn't rush the relationship between Bryce and Hunt. And it was still sexy enough that I was like, oh, I love these people. And I feel like in the next one, if the next one is still from our same points of view, because that's something I'll talk about in the spoiler review of my theories, I think that could be amazing. Okay. All right. Let's go into the spoilers. The first thing I want to talk about actually is, I'll get to the sad stuff in a minute, is what I think could be happening in a next book. So I think there's lots of hints to this because this book could have been a standalone like I know it's not going to be but I like that she did that that is the mark of a good you know it reminds me the same way of where like if you've just read Akatar, like if you just read the first one you would feel like that was a successful story right you could take this as a standalone if you wanted to well one of the things I think could be possible is if she does another book and like names it after one of the other houses, it could be about the witch queen and ruin because there is some serious chemistry happening between the two of them. I feel like it's not even like subtly hinted at. So what would it look like if the next book was focused on like ruin and uh, I don't know how to say her name. Um, is it Hypaxia? I don't know where it is. Yeah, Hypaxia. What if like they're the main characters in the next one? And then like each of the books could, you know, it would still have Hunt and Bryce in it because they're so close to them. And maybe there would still be some scenes from their point of view. But I'd either like to see her add because I want to see their relationship because they are two big power players. We have the Queen of the Witches and we have the Autumn Prince which would be awesome. And I know that Ruin, he, you know, again and again is like, like, I'm happy my sister is alive and that she has these powers and I regret that we didn't get to be close to each other all this time because she was afraid of what I would think. But I loved their relationship. Bryce and Ruin's relationship was so cool to watch. It was so cool to watch. Okay, a couple other things to talk about the back and forth of like what Danica was doing and how different people kept giving Bryce more information about her and we weren't sure like going into like the last part of it I mean I knew I knew Sarah wouldn't have Danica actually have been a selfish person who was just doing the drugs for fun like I knew that's where that wasn't where she was going but she had me doubting and I think that that's what's amazing like 
when Sabine was so like open about what had happened and she in her bitchy awful way was like I was just trying to rescue my daughter's name because of the choices that she made I honestly was like oh no what if that's what Danica was doing but of course it wasn't because Sarah would never do that to us but I thought it was just really well put in there that subtly we were changing our opinion of Danica back and forth all the way through and then to see that the moves Danica made to protect Bryce were amazing and the fact that love was strong enough to send her back and it wasn't just her love with Hunt. That gave her motivation to come back but the fact that Bryce had sacrificed so that Danica wouldn't, you know, be in eternal suffering. And then Danica sacrificed what was left of her to send Bryce back to hunt and back to life was so amazing. Like the whole, like there was a 50 page chunk right there where just everyone was making sacrifices for each other out of love and it wasn't all romantic love was so beautiful and when the alpha prime of the pack you know first when he wakes up from his nap and is like wolf there's a wolf out there I was just like yes because because Bryce had the heart of the wolf and she had Danica's protection like over her and she's taking Danica's sword and just like I'm gonna protect the weak in this city that the angels and the fae are forsaking. I'm going to do this. And when she reveals her secret that way to hold back, to hold back the evil, it was so powerful. It was so powerful. Um, Lahaba, I know everyone wants me to talk about Lahaba. Okay, so I knew that Lahaba died because I watched spoiler reviews for this, you know, when it first came out. But I told, I think, you know, if you're new to my channel, like I usually watch spoiler reviews for books, especially like this. That's why I make them now and then, because I know sometimes you need an extra kick into reading a book. And just because I know something's gonna happen, it doesn't mean that I'll remember it when I'm reading it. But one thing I did remember, because I remember watching a review of one of my friends who was just bawling because of Lahaba. So as soon as Lahaba got introduced to me, I was like, oh no, this is Lahaba. And then I was like, don't get too attached. Don't get attached. And I just couldn't help it. I loved that she liked watching smutty soap operas. And I love that she connected with Hunt because she's like, we're of the same house. And my great ancestor went down fighting beside Hunt in the last rebellion. And so we're connected. And I just love that little water sprite so much. And so I kept waiting for when is this moment going to be that we're going to lose the Haba? And, mm, <laughs> and I knew, I knew the minute that that knocks, that knock got brought to the library, that that was going to be what did it because he is water and she's a fire sprite. Sorry, I called her a water sprite. I meant fire sprite. I knew that that was going to be what did her in and when Micah is trying to break out of the bathroom and um, Bryce is hurt and she's trying to drag Spherinx out and she's not going to be able to make it. Um, to have Lahaba be like, you won't make it. And Bryce is like, no, you're free. You don't have to sacrifice yourself. Like, you're free. Don't do this. And she's like, I know. And just so you know, my like first and last act as being free is going to save you. Mm. <laughs> and when she's ramming herself at that tank she's just like I am with my friends and I'm not afraid my friends are with me and I'm not afraid and I was just like oh my gosh <laughs> and we're not even talking about the fact that Hunt and Ruin and Deck and Hypoxia like they're all forced to just watch this on the screens because Sandriel like won't let them leave and even if they left like they wouldn't be able to get there in time and Micah is just like pounding on the bathroom door and he's trying to get out and when it becomes clear that like Bryce isn't going to use that to run away because running away wouldn't help her and I loved I loved so much that Sarah had a literal Chekhov's gun above the effing mantelpiece in 
Jessica's office. So she runs up, She when she runs up to the office, sets down um, her pet and just starts popping the gun together. And we know that she knows how to use that gun because her father, her adopted father, was one of the greatest human fighters that's ever lived. She pops that gun together, lifts it up and takes the breath. And Sarah writes it, she's like, Hunt knew that those were the two seconds that Lahaba bought her, the two seconds to allow her to aim the gun. And then the last line of that chapter is, and Bryce blew Micah's fucking head off. And I was like, oh my God. And then, like I said, Sarah makes it worth it for you. She makes that sacrifice Lahaba made worth it to you because not only, not only does she shoot him in the head because he could heal from that so what that bullet does because it's the god killer is it goes in and it stays in there and it stays like continuously you know i imagined it again i'm making this is fiction of like continuously like almost like freezing him in that place and then she takes danica's sword which she had all along i knew she had her fucking sword somewhere and she cuts him in half and then she covers him in gasoline she burns him and then she sucks his ashes up with a vacuum because that motherfucker wasn't going to get off easy. And I was just, while I'm crying my eyes out, I was so satisfied. But then I looked and there was still three and a half hours of the audiobook left. And I'm like, most people would end it there, right? Most people, or even they would have ended it with, her going outside and realizing that Micah was successful in blowing the horn, um, which is what we've been looking for the whole time. And all the gates are open and hell is coming through the gates, which wasn't what Micah was trying to do, but it is a horrible side effect. That could have been a place to end it. And she could have left us on the cliffhanger of how are we going to fix this? But no, we're gonna see Bryce reveal everything and share that she's actually a starborn fae, even if she is a half-blood. And that's what blinded the Oracle, is that she has this great power, and that she can use it to shut a gate. And when it only shuts one gate, she decides to make her drop to become immortal. But she does it seemingly without an anchor. And it is Danica on the other side, who still had enough of herself left to be there, and the drop she makes, the first light that drops, it heals everyone who's injured in the city. It closes all of the gates. It undoes everything that was done. But we have Bryce who's like, I don't want to go back. Like, nobody wants me to be back, which is just crap because we know all these people who care about her, her half brother. We even know her father cares about her a little bit. Her mother, her stepbrother, I mean her stepfather, Hunt, who she healed by this. So now Hunt is healed sitting over her dead body and is like, you are not fucking leaving me. And Danica convinces her to come back. And she will, she is more powerful than the Autumn King, which I assume means she could become the queen of that court if she wanted to, but she's not gonna reach that high. So the threads of this that get left at the end, because again, you could read this book as a standalone if you want to. I doubt you will want to after you read it, because the world is so rich and so beautiful and just so well built. And you're, I'm excited about every one of the houses. I want to go to them and see more about it. We see Jessica talking with the like Prince of Darkness, I think, who he's actually been an encouraging um, figure to um, Bryce and gave her advice about, you know, where to look and what to do about this. And he said things are about to get really interesting. So if you read this whole book and like don't read the epilogue, this could be a standalone for you. And I think it's really well written. Um, but obviously they're doing some stirrings and something that was really fascinating. So Bryce is looking through a bunch of these forbidden books at one point to try to find out how to free Hunt from his slavery, which at the end of this book, the witch queen, she removed his halo. So he's not, his power isn't locked and he's able to kill Sanriel, which was the most, that was second only to Bryce chopping Micah in half and burning his ashes. 
is Hunt getting revenge against Sandriel for not only the past evil she's done, but the fact that she wouldn't let him go save Bryce and actually sent people to kill her after she's saving the city. And he cuts her head off. And so we lost two archangels in one day. <laughs> and he's now like, you know, but he still had his slave tattoo, which means he would belong to the next person in charge with, which it turns out would have been Isaiah, which wouldn't have been the worst thing because Isaiah is pretty cool. But then Bryce gets a call that if she will keep herself to herself, they remove, they remove his tattoo. So not only is his power unbound, but he's also free. And it's done as kind of a bribe where if you don't fuck with us, we're going to leave you in peace. So, but we now have like the two most powerful beings in existence are both free and their powers are unhinged. So I can't imagine that they'll just go on being happy and making babies without being involved in the continuing conflict. So, wow. All right. Let's see what else I have in my, my notes. I think those are the most of the things that I wanted to squee about is just how well the world was built, how wonderful the relationships were. Um, I loved when Bryce made her call to hunt when she thinks she'll be sacrificing herself and just like is giving forgiveness to everyone and asking forgiveness from people and, you know, telling him she forgives him. And I just love them. I love their relationship. I love how it was an antagonism. And when that antagonism slowly starts to turn to teasing and then the teasing starts to turn to, I really love you. Um, I didn't believe that he was fully betraying her at all. I couldn't believe that he had thought about it for a while. That was really interesting to me. What happened to his friends was horrible. Um, just it was intense like there are trigger warnings in this book um something i didn't even mention but the things that are said about bryce the the slut shaming that happens to her because before connor she was you know really open and free and she did what she wanted to and that she just called such horrible things and that hunt he never called her a slut or a loose woman but he did call her a party girl and before he knew her and didn't realize that so much of that was just she was carrying so much weight she was carrying so many things on top of herself and when she lost Annika she gave all that up like she stopped drinking and doing drugs and sleeping with whoever but the wolves were still super cruel to her and people would call her a slut and they would blame her for what happened to Danica not knowing that like I mean Danica was doing good things but like she got herself in the situation she got herself into she definitely didn't deserve to die for it she was trying to help people but it wasn't something Bryce did that got her into this problem it was because Micah was a fucking maniac that it happened so wow all right there we go. I love this. It was five out of five stars. I can't think of any other things to mention right now because I just finished the book and it's all out there. I'll try to write up a, a good review for my Goodreads. And of course, this is a discussion video for me. So please tell me your favorite parts. I'm just, I loved it. This book was picked for our like book club, our buddy read. And I'm so glad it got picked. I was so reluctant when I got picked at the beginning because I was like, really, you're picking the biggest one off of my list. But I'm so happy because it was about time I read this book. And then just when this one got picked, it went, uh, it was my deal of the day on Audible. So I got the Audible for like $4.99. So I actually listened to this and it was amazing. So there we go. I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching this. I put up new videos three to four times a week and you can watch some more of them right now. Bye.